morning session. And the second speaker is Brian Dorin from the Universidad del Norte, who will talk about the equivalent of the United States. So, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you, Ernesto and Jaco, for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to be here and more in this conference honoring Samuel Hitler, a very charismatic mathematician from here in Mexico. So I'm going to talk about the subject on which I know that perhaps some of you will not understand any of the words that I put on the word. So I'll, I'll try to somehow guide you through the understanding of these words. And, uh, and I will finish with, with a specific classification of this uh, point of fusion categories. So let me, let me start with the object that I'll work with. It's a, it's a very nice, simple object. So I'll have a finite group um, as a start and uh, a three cycle. So I put it here with coefficients in C star. So what does this mean? I will tell you in a while how could you think of this information. But anyway, so with this information I can construct a very simple tensor category that is defined in this way on which the objects, uh, we should think of them as uh, vector spaces which are labeled by the letters of the group. So each of these VEGs is, uh, is a vector space, complex vector space. Uh, complex vector space. So you simply take, for every letter of the group, take a vector space. And um, homomorphisms between these uh, vector spaces should fix the label. So you only have homomorphisms for, for each label, but you can tensor these objects. So, and basically you use the convolution product or you use the product of the group, and uh, you simply say that this is um, the following object, on which I'm using the tensor structure of the of vector spaces. So I'm just simply saying that if I have, a, say, a vector space only based at G and another vector space only based at H, when I tensor them, I get something based at G, G times H. So the, pro the, groups, the group structure is somehow on the labels, and then I just tensor the vector space. So with this, uh, I can construct this tensor category, but then I use the omega to change the association, the way the associator goes. So I then simply say that uh, BG tensor WK tensor C sub L, and I just decide a specific isomorphism from the way I do the association of these things. And, uh, and I just simply take the cycle that I have here to, to somehow twist this association. So I just simply use uh, this element, which is an element in the complex number variable, and I uh, take this. So it's simply the, the, the way we associate this tensor of these elements, but then we just twist it a little bit. So as I said, then you might think, well, this is some sort of an, an, an enlargement of, of your category of vector spaces. And I'm just somehow telling you how we are doing associators. And then this satisfies some pentagon identity that I'm not, not going to write. But this pentagon identity, basically measuring how you're going to put these objects together is, is equivalent to saying that the that the this element omega is, is, a, is a cycle, it's equivalent to this. The cycle condition is telling you that it satisfies the pentagon identity. Now this is this is a very simple tensor category, let's say one of the most simple ones, you take a group, you take a cycle and you construct a tensor category. Now uh, from this tensor category you can construct modules out of it. So I'm not going to give you all the diagrams that this may have, but you have to see a tensor category. Uh, and, and, and let's have a tensor category like this one, on which the space of homomorphisms is a, is a C linear space. So these types of tensor categories. I can construct module categories. So this is over C, in which, like in this case, the homomorphisms are C linear spaces. What, what is going to be then a module over this tensor category? Well, you, you, if you 
haven't thought about this before, then you should think that we have an algebra and we're going to construct a, a modular and algebra. The idea is the same, although we have to take care that all these things are categories and whatnot. So what is going to be this? Well, it's going to be a bifunctor from uh, this tensor product of categories to this one, satisfying a lot of information. But um, the point being is that uh, I could define it. And uh, one of the specific information that I have in here so I'm going to put it in, in this terminology. Um, is, is a way to, to define uh, the, the way uh, we are acting now. So now, as we are in this world, we, we don't have somehow explicit, uh, explicit way to do the association. So we need to define explicitly what happens if I take elements of the category and I tensor them in the category, and then I act them on the module? What is the relation between the act on the module and then act again on what is in the module? Then I need to prescribe some isomorphisms, and these have to satisfy some, and again, some pentagon identity. So everything somehow is, uh, is, 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 is weak now, it's not strict. But anyway, this, this, these are these modules. So we can construct the modules. The modules, um, in this case, are simple to describe of this category. And the question is, um, how do I know when two of these categories of this type do have equivalent categories of modules? Like in the same sense, like in algebra. So when, when are two algebras more equivalent? When, are, when do they have the same or equivalent categories of modules? So this is the question that I want to answer. So uh, when, if I have two of these, G omega, two different groups, two different twists. When do they have, when have a equivalent categories of modules? No. So now this is the question. So I define some categories, I define some modules. I, I, they have, I have some, some decomposable modules, I have some structural pieces that build all the modules, and then I have, a, I have a category. Now, what are the conditions that I need to impose on G and omega such that the categories models are the same? Of course, if, they, if I have the groups that are isomorphic and the cohomology classes are somehow one map to the other by the isomorphism, of course, the categories are equivalent. But the question is, how could I determine which different groups and which different twists will give me this? Now, let me just somehow tell you some, some sort of implications of this thing um, that relates to, to some construction of Dreamfield, of the Dreamfield double, and of some constructions of Witten and Dacrams and whatnot. So what is the center of one of these categories? If I, if I have a tensor category, uh, there, is a, there is some sort of analog of the center of an algebra, which is the center of one of these categories. So, it is, I will tell you only the objects to, for you to have an idea. So objects are a, a pair, so where X is an object of the original category, um, and, and eta is uh, a bunch of isomorphisms. Um, ah, sorry, a bunch for isomorphisms for, for each element. So, and uh, by the same. So what does this mean? That for each uh, y uh, in objects, I need to tell you a specific isomorphism from uh, x tensor y to y tensor x. So it's a way to somehow shift the coordinates. And so the center precisely are the elements on which I know how to do this. So if you think of the center of, of an algebra, are the ones on which are commuting with everybody. So then this object is, uh, is a tensor category. But it, what is more important is that it's braided because somehow at, at having chosen this uh, object, the braiding comes automatically embedded into the definition of the object. That's, that's somehow what is very, very important. So this is braided. 
So in the sense, why is this braided? Because if I have, if I go from x eta uh, to y epsilon j to y epsilon uh, x eta, some sense. I just simply use the way to go from there is basically using the starting one. And so the the, the braiding is is already embedded in the information of the first object. So then this category is uh, is braided tensor category. Now in the in the case of that we are studying here, um, this category is well known and it was now constructed by Drinfeld himself. So I could simply take the center of this tensor category. And, and this category is the information, or, or with this category I can construct a quasi-triangular Hopf algebra, which is called the twisted Drinfeld double of the finite group. I don't know how to write Drinfeld, but since like many of you are here, some people write with something here, which I don't know why. Perhaps tell me. Oh, well, it stands for something in Russian which is not pronounced. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then this is um, a specific quasi-triangular Hopf algebra. So it's, it's, it's something like a Hopf algebra, but on which the multiplication is not associative on the nose, but it's weakly associative. It's, 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 uh, it's a co-algebra, uh, but moreover, it has a braid, so it satisfies the Jack Baxter equation. So that's the importance of this object. Now, the, this object also was uh, used or discovered or by Witten and Daycraft, because this is a way to construct a toy model for chern simons or a finite dimension or a finite group chern simons theory provides or give us this algebra. So if I have a group and I, I just construct chern simons um, by using this group as gauge group um, and I use this omega here, recall that omega is a class in H3 of the group with C star coefficients, but this is the same as H4 of BG with integral coefficients. So, so then we know short Simons, we, we are in the right place uh, that we take the class that's coming from the third homology of the Lie group. If we had a Lie group and we construct the Simons here, this is the object that appears and, uh, and gives us a topological field. Now, the, the, the point being, what is very important now, is that uh, when or how do I define, how, how do I say that two tensor categories are more equivalent. Of course, I could say that the, that the categories of the modules are equivalent, but somehow this was the definition that appeared first, or the definition that was used by the people in tensor categories. So, um, prior to that, so let, let me take, if I, let me take mu a uh, uh, decomposable, like a simple object, module uh, on the tensor category C. So then I could construct, uh, like, like I do in the algebra world, I can construct functors from this category, from M to M basically. Functors from the category M to itself, or like, we think of endomorphisms in this appropriate category. And, uh, and this is, uh, again, is all six a tensor category by the composition of functors. And let, let, let me just simply denote it uh, by this. Some sort, of, some sort of dual of the original category via mu. So the definition now is two tensor categories, V uh, and uh, C are called Morita equivalent. Uh, if D as a tensor category is equivalent to C dual via some decomposable model. So the way to think of this is 
will give me some sort of module in your category, taking domorphisms, the category you're getting will be more equivalent to my original one. So then with this uh, information in here, what is quite interesting is the following result, Ostrich and some other people, which is uh, the following. Mm, if I do have two tensor categories which are more equivalent, their centers are isomorphic. Which is so, and this is an if and only if. Um, so if I have C and D more equivalent, if and only if the centers of these categories. How far is the center from Cauchy? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me finish writing R. But I need to I need to say what type of equivalence. So this is more equivalence there, and here's braiding equivalent. I need to use the, the braiding. Otherwise, I, I cannot reconstruct the original material. It has to be using the braid. So now the question of Ernest, how far are these people far from Hochschild? In the sense that Hochschild is the derived center of an algebra? Or what well, for a category, uh, Hochschild of a category. Well, it depends on, on your category, and this is this is the naive center, this is the zero part, this is H, H not. You, you haven't derived it. In, in this case, we don't need to do any derivations. But uh, but if you choose any category, you this would be what is in the zero part. Uh, but I mean in this... <coughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, the, all these things here are exact. So then if everything is exact, so then this is just the, H, just the H zero part. So this, but if, I, if you do it more general, then, then you need to see whether you have the exact sequence or not. You need to derive it. I haven't derived it because I don't need it. <coughs> it's, it's not the, the homology of the group is not appearing here. Okay, okay. So yeah, I, I, I guess this would be relevant if it was a DG cat or something like that, or yes, or if you would be detecting modules of the group, but you're not detecting any modules of the group. It's okay. not appearing somehow. Okay, okay. So then. If, if we accept this result, which is very nice, I mean, if you have that the two centers are equivalent, then you may reconstruct more equivalence. Then uh, the question is, if I want to classify all these field theories, if I want to classify these quasi-triangular algebras that are braided, if I want to say when two of these are isomorphic, it would be the same as calculating when are the original information more equivalent. So then, simple thing, these uh, twisted driven doubles are isomorphic as a braided algebra, so braided hop algebra. If braided algebra, so this is braiding, braided. So if and only if these two categories uh, are more equivalent. So. In some sense, if I was, as I was telling Hugo in the intermediate, if I do the chern simons construction for this group and this twist, or if I do the chern simons construction for this group and this twist, I, I get the same physics, say. I, I, I get the same topological quantum field theory. I, I cannot distinguish the two from the original information because what I detect is this, which is the center. So, so what, which pairs of groups would give me same some topological field theories, and that's what I'm going to, to answer here. Now, the, the, these objects have appeared in several disguises, um, and so let me give you one disguise that appeared. Uh, this appeared when I was almost a yeah, student. So, if one takes representations of the twisted little doll. Now, note that this is the same as representations of the center of this category. Many, many, many letters, no? but they have a category, they have modules, the modules, uh, this is what I call representations. And I could take isomorphism classes of these representations, and this becomes something that the, the Neston and I have 
started. This is what uh, my, my, my advisors called the twisted or the stringy twisted K theory of the orbifold or the kaleidoscope. Okay, so, this, <laughs> so this was uh, <coughs> this is, is a way to endow the K theory associated to a group with a, with a ring structure. And, uh, and if I start with a three cycle, there is a way to get via the inverse transgression map um, some k-theories, and this is the, let me put it somehow, the, the way that is constructed. So I take the inertia groupoid of this, so g acting on itself, and then I put the transgression of this element, and at least as a module, this is the way it's defined, and then the multiplication is some sort of pull-push uh, construction. But so, so this had appeared before, and, uh, and again, if I do half, Two of these Morita equivalence categories, then the, algeb the algebra that I could get are automatically isomorphic. Now, um, al al although one could try to do it uh, on, on as the algebra level, what is the isomorphism? It, it turns out to be quite complicated because because I'm doing things at the level of the center, so that the center somehow makes these calculations very complicated. But somehow, let, let me somehow change a little bit and, and, and tell you one way to understand of a group and a three-co cycle. And, and the way to think, one way to think about this is in the language of the two groups, or the language of cross modules. And so having G and a three-co cycle is having some sort of specific type of weak two-group or a, or a cross module. So it's not far away from perhaps things that we've seen. So let me just... Um, go to this world. So the, this category has, uh, it is quite big, but it has uh, some sort of a skeletal version of it. So namely, I just choose one object for each isomorph isomorphism class, only one, and, uh, and I just simply basically reconstruct the information of the category out of this specific minimal version of the category. So I just take one object for each isomorphism class. Here there are many, because there are many automorphisms. But if I do that, then the skeletal version the skeletal version is simply, um, I like call it like this. So the objects of this category, its objects, are just simply the elements of the group only, not vector space over it. And uh, I, I don't allow any morphism from a, any different object to another object. Or if you want, if I want to say morphisms from G to H in this category is uh, uh, C if G is equal to H and zero if G is zero than H. Some sort of. So I just simply say that the, the, the endomorphisms of any object is C and there is no morphism from any other. And if I do this, then I can, so I have objects my morphisms. So the automorphisms, of course, the automorphisms of any object is simply C star. So you have a group on the base. At each group, I have automorphism C star. And the omega is the associator in the same way. So I just decide G tensor H tensor K uh, is given by omega of G H K by G tensor H tensor K. So with this information, this category, it is equivalent to the one on top. It is, it is minimal. And if you see what is the information I have, the information I have is a finite group uh, and a billion group and a three cycle. And uh, if we know what is the classification of the isomorphism classes of cross modules, this is the information that is precisely isomorphism class of a cross module. So what is a cross module? So let, let us just simply go to this world of cross modules. These were uh, described by Whitehead at understanding the homotopy type of the two types of topological considerable complexes that are connected and that are uh, whose homotopy groups different from zero, the pi one, pi two, only that. 
So we want to understand what is the information that is encoded in these topological spaces. And he showed that is the fundamental group, the way the fundamental group acts in the second homotopy group, and the one element that says in some sense how these things are twisted, which is the first element of the Posnikov tower, is just an element of the third homology group of the fundamental group of the coefficients in the pi tube. But so, what is a cross module? G, G is discrete or finite? G in, this case, G in, the, in my talk will be finite. So, this is in this case really like a line bundle of the three loop space of BG? Yes, but a specific one. Yeah. This line bundle of the three loop space of BG. Yeah. This line bundle is the, the transgressed. Mm -hmm. it, that, that leaves on the center again. No, no, but uh, from, from, from this some sort of uh, universe of topological quantum field theory of uh, 3, 2, 1, 0, this is what lives on the point, and mm -hmm. you're telling me what lives on, 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 on the circle. Mm -hmm. But if you have what if on this curve, what is this curve, what is my hypothesis? If we have the information of a point, we have the whole 3, 2, 1, 0 information of the field here. The, the thing is that we know what it is on a point when G is finite. So we tell you, tell you, we don't know what, what is the information when G is a Lie group. We, we know what is the 3 to 1 theory, but we don't know how to pull it down to 0. Well, but I don't know. <laughs> Jacob Lurie gives this complicated algorithm. Ah, okay. okay. Maybe, maybe he knows, but I don't know. <laughs> so, mm, so then what is a cross module? So we have um, a pair of groups and a homomorphism. Uh, these are groups. And uh, an action of G1 into G2. And uh, let me call elements in here alpha and beta, and let me call elements in here by letters A. That satisfies some equations. So let me, let me just say that the action of G into is via some uh, uh, action on the right. So the equation is, and let me just simply say that this element goes to with an underline. It's just a simplified way to say what is a cross model. So I have an action, a right action of G1 into G2. And these are the equations that you need to satisfy, which is if I take an element alpha and I act by A, this has to be the same. Oh, you need to. Oh, you see, I'm doing it. I need to be careful. Yeah. If I have no, sorry. If I have an alpha and I send it to G1 and I act by A by conjugation, it has to be the same as taking alpha which is on top, act by the element here, and push it down. And the other equation is if I take an element beta and I act it by the image of alpha, it has to be the same as beta of alpha, the conjugation. So when I put it on the line, it means it goes here. When it goes here, it acts on here. Well, this is very complicated, I know. The, the first time you see this, it makes no sense. But the, there are some structures that you need to put, basically, that the, that the Conjugation action of G on itself by the automorphism has to be somehow compatible with this. An example of this, perhaps the most simple example, is take G in G2 and take automorphisms of G in G1, and simply the map from here to here is the, auto, the inner automorphism that G defines. So you simply take G, send it to the adjoint action of G. And this is the most somehow known cross module. The kernel is the center, the co-kernel is the, out, the external automorphism group. Now, the thing is, these cross modules, um, I just define them like that. You see there is no twist in some sense. The category of cross modules, there is a very easiest description in another world. So the category of cross modules is equivalent to the category of two groups. So what is a two group? So a two group is a group object in group points. So it's a group object in group points. Group object in group points. Group points, discrete group points. I'm not putting here to poverty for the time being. So what does it mean that it's a group object in group points? It means that you have a G is a groupoid. And this groupoid has to have a multiplication and has to have an inverse map. So 
you need to have a map. But, but why is not a group object in groups? Also, of course, there there are gazillions ways to describe a cross module. So but yes, a group object in groups is going to be an abelian group. Actually, a group object in groups is an abelian group, and that's the reason why. <coughs> well, so for the people not knowing, so a groupoid is is a category in which every object is invertible. So it has some objects, uh, some objects, sorry, d not, some morphisms, a source and a target, a multiplication, and some map going here, which is the, the way that you choose the identity. So that's a groupoid. But now I, 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 if I take a group in groupoids, it means that all these machines, although this <coughs> object, <coughs> has a map of groupoids, which is called the inverse, and moreover has a map of groupoids which is the multiplication, <coughs> which satisfies the diagrams that a group satisfies as diagram. So you take what is the definition of a group diagrammatically and you put in the category of group points. Now if you do that, what you get is equivalent to a cross model. So in some sense, all these equations will appear if you entangle what is a group in group points. And what happens if you don't have an inverse here? Then, but well, at least you are not able to show that the kernel of this is civilian. You need the kernel of this to be a billion. As you said, a group object in groups. A group object in groups of course, of is an abelian group. So so I need to have the inverse to show that the that what is on top of the identity is a billion. And that's somehow the kernel of this thing. So perhaps an, uh, the, I like this description because it's all the information has to be here, and then you just make it happen. There. So how how to go from one to the other? Well, there is a way to go from one to the other. So if I have one of this information, if I have a cross module, then um, if I have a cross module, so the way to construct a, a, a groupoid is my G not will be G one acting on G two and G1 will be G2, and the way to define the source is simply, um, oh, the other way around, sorry. This is G1, this is G0. The source uh, will be simply uh, for getting the G1, and the target is using the action together with the delta. The arrow goes down. The arrow goes down. But anyway, so you simply construct it using the action of this into this. Those are the morphisms, and the objects will be this. G2. G, G, G1. It's to be G1. Yeah, and the way, the way you go from G2 to G1 is using this data. Nevertheless, now we, we have this, but as you may notice, and there is some information in this cross module which I can get out of it, which is the kernel of delta and the co-kernel of delta. So it turns out to be, um, so I, I simply define um, out of this uh, cross module, I could define the co-kernel and the kernel. The kernel will be an abelian group, and this is just a group, and it turns out that the information that classifies the cross module is this co kernel, this kernel, and a three co cycle. So the, the class, uh, the, 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 the isomorphism class of the, of, the cro of the cross module is given by this co kernel of delta, the kernel, which is abelian, and some element. Some element we call L in the of the co-kernel with imagine the with coefficients in the kernel. So what I'm trying to portray here is if we have the category of cross modules, if I want to understand what are the cohomologies, somehow the isomorphism classes of cross modules, the information that is somehow relevant for the isomorphism class is the co-kernel, which we think of it as the fundamental group of the two type associated, the kernel, which is the second homotopy group of the two type associated, and the 
cosine column here, which is the first port of the Poznikov invariant, the Poznikov tunnel. Good. So having in this in mind, when I construct this category that I told you, V, G, as I said again, um, C star, or sorry, V, G omega, this tensor category, we should think that is a specific kind of cross module, where it's a specific kind of two group, a very simple one, on which the two group associated is given this G will, would amount to be to the co kernel, C star would amount to be to the kernel, and the omega would be the invariant on the C3 of G of C star. So, what I'm trying to portray here is that if I give you this category, it's completely related to two groups, it's completely related to cross modules. It's just a very simple, somehow, um, cross module on which G is acting trivially here, and but it has the advantage, because I'm taking the kernel to be the, the whole C star, that it gives me a tensor category, which is based on the complex number. So in some sense, I, could, I could go to the world of fusion categories and work there, because this two group has this automorphism group of the objects, which makes it then a C linear space. Good. And conversely, if you had a more general situation, could it be like a non abelian germ on the concurrent? Or for Wait. <laughs> Let, let's start again. On the more general. Co conversely, so in the. This is a particular case. Yeah, so th this is a particular case of a, of, a two, of a two group or a cross module. A cross it's, module. A, it's a cross module or a two group. That's right. But conversely, if a conversely means if I have a cross module, a general one, okay. would it be the same as a non abelian gem on the co kernel of the cross module seen as a stack? Well, the, cro the cross module is the two group. And, oh, uh, and so. What am I doing all, all this all, all to, to get into here? In order to go to the world of tensor categories on which, in which the morphisms is a C linear space. Okay. You see? So because any cross module in general, no. The, the automorphism of a point is some abelian group. Hmm, I don't know what it is. But in this case, it's C star. Therefore, I could go to the world of fusion categories. And then I could work there, which I have some, some, some more room to play. But what I wanted to portray is a G and a cycle, you should think of as a two group, or as a cross module, or as some sort of two type of some sort. Yeah, I'll ask you later. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. So somehow, let me go to, to how this thing goes. So let me go back to my category. My category is this category that I put in here. And uh, I basically tell you, so I have this category is, as I said, it's just the group itself and it has some associate. So what is up? What is any decomposable module? So the information for a module in here, so a module, or any decomposable. is given by an orbit type. So G mod a subgroup, so it has to be some sort of orbit type. But like why? Because at the end, these are the objects of the module category, and G is acting on the objects. So it has to be some G set. If the composable will make it transitive. Therefore, it's one of these things. And the other information is some, uh, some specific map that what it does is that it tells me that the in some sense, what it tells me is that I need to satisfy some pentagon isomorphism or pentagon identity, and it tells me that this, this is the information that I told you how to multiply and has to satisfy this equation. One of the conclusions of this thing, simple, that omega has to be trivial on the subgroup as a cohomology class. So if I want to have a module that is either composable, I need an orbit type, but moreover, I need the isotropy group of the orbit type at some point to trivialize the condition. So this, this is some, somehow just because I need the pentagon to <coughs> So if I want, say, uh, a point, just a point, I would need the component <coughs> class to be trivial. Good. So with this in mind, I could somehow 
uh, if I put some other conditions, let me put some other conditions. If L as a subgroup is normal, uh, so L is normal, well, let me call it that, yeah, let me call it A. And the abelian, then the, this dual category, so I put this uh, G and I put this omega, and I take the dual associated to this module, then it's again one of these categories. Then this category is equivalent to some other category of G hat and omega hat. So these are some conditions that I need to satisfy, and I'm now going to tell you the result, and we can somehow say somehow we can distinguish some groups on which the centers of these categories are equivalent. So this is the theorem. somehow the cohomological information. So let me tell you what is the cohomological information. Since I have here a normal subgroup on which is a billion, I could take the extension. So if I have an element F, which is a second cohomology of, let me call it the kernel, I'm going to call it K, with coefficients in A. So this object is going to generate this group. And if I have another one, which okay. gives... Okay. Sorry? Who cares? Let me just put it here. So, so you have A is a normal subgroup of G, and this is a co kernel. Let me call it K. So I could construct this G as an extension of K by A, where K is acting in A. So I construct this cohomology class, and I construct another one, but now on the dual. So this is some sort of sort of abelian duality on the theories. So A in this case is the dual of the group. And with these two elements, I can construct another cycle, and this is where the group cohomology comes into play. So I could define an element uh, which is the following. I could, this element takes values in A hat, this takes values in A, and I can, quote, I can compose them. So I define F, with elements K1, K2, dual evaluated in F of K3 and K4. So this element in here is a co-chain, four co-chain of K with coefficients of C star. If I know that this is closed, I'll tell you the con what, what, ha what happens. So if I have so let me put it this way. I, I want to understand when two groups are, two groups and cycles give me the same information in the center. And I'm going to tell you the information that I need to have. So the information I need to have is that G is an extension of A, and that the dual is an extension of the dual. How the groups are related? Well, I need that the definition, that the classes that define these groups are related via this equation. Namely, this product has to be trivial in homology. If I have this information, then I could say the following. So this is the theorem. This is by me. So I just simply, if I have this information, then take G to be the extension of K by A via this F. Take G hat to be the extension of A dual by F. So these are two groups. One is extended by A, the other one extended by A hat. Different groups. With I can define an omega. And the omega is simply defined, omega is defined by f hat and epsilon. And I'll put it simply f hat times epsilon in a appropriate way. And omega hat is f times epsilon. If I have this information, the two categories are more equivalent. And moreover, any equivalence is of this type. And any more equivalence is of this type. So if I do have two more equivalent categories of this sort, means that I could construct it in this way. Look that the way G hat has F hat and in its twist um, and in the twist the information of F. And in the twist of G is the information of F hat. So the, 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 
the twisting of the group goes to the twisting of the class, the twisting of the class goes to the twisting of the group. This is, this is reminiscent of T-duality in, in, in physics or in K-theory. This is just some sort of version of T-duality. So let me give you the examples. So example one. The simplest example we can construct is with uh, with G, I'm going to take it Z2 times Z2. So in this case, the abelian group is going to be Z2 and the K group is going to be Z2. And G hat will be C4. They both live, these are the two tensions of Z2 by Z2. Now I'm going to take uh, omega and omega hat. So omega, will, omega hat will be, in this case, trivial, because all these groups already twisted and this is untwisted. So omega is going to be the following class, which is x squared, y squared, which is an element on the, the fourth cohomology group of bz2 cross z2 with coefficients in the integers. So I'm taking an element of degree four as an element of the three. And in this case, we have that the Dreamfeld double of x squared, y squared of z2 cross z2 is isomorphic, is abraded algebra to the untwisted of C4. This is somehow the, most, the simplest of the simplest examples. So, on which tells me that um, the untwisted group, but twisted by the three class, is the same as the information given by the twisted group, but somehow the information of the twist of the chern simon theory is not there. So if I, if I would like to extrapolate these two chern simons if I have some sort of information on the group which is on twisting something like SU2, which is on twisting SO3. Therefore, the Chern Simons associated to SU2 is to be equal to, this, to the Chern Simons of SO3 cross Z2 with some twist. This I'm not able to prove because this procedure will not fit for the Lee group case. Let me give you. Um, an example for Alberto. The binary tetrahedral. No. Uh -huh. So binary tetrahedral is the extension of the tetrahedral group, the symmetry of the tetrahedron, which is A4. Uh -huh. So we have A4, which sits in SO3 as symmetries of the tetrahedron. Mm -hmm. And then as uh, Alberto was telling us, so we take the lift to SU2, and this is the binary tetrahedral, tetrahedral group, and uh, it's an extension of Z2. Mm -hmm. So with this information in hand, the tensor category of the binary tetrahedral is more equivalent. It's the same thing, no? So the category of A4 cross Z2, with the appropriate twist that defines the extension. Name, name it the way you want it. This extension is defined by the second cohomology class. This is a, some sort of alpha that defines the second cohomology class of A4 with your efficiency in Z2, coming from the pullback of the generic extension here. It's a, it's a second Stephen Whitney class. And uh, this class, I could lift it to some class in here, and it tells me the theory you want it to the binary, they have binary tetrahedral is equivalent to the non-twisted one. And as I said before, this is some sort of the finite version of what I was telling Hugo of the, non, of the Lee group version, on which SU2 is twisted, it's an extension of the twist, the twisted version of SU2 by Z2, but I could lift it untwisted, but then I put some, some class there on which I do the chern simons theory. So, of course, one could cook up many more examples. One can take, for example, the quaternions group. Untwisted is uh, equivalent to some specific twist that I call B of the, of the dihedral group because the dihedral and the, and the, uh, the quaternionic group are both extensions of Z2 by Z4, where Z2 acts on Z4 by, by the non-trivial automorphism. Um, and so, this gives somehow a way to classify all possible fusion categories up to more equivalents. What is going on here? 
what is going on here is that at, at allowing, so I have a group on the, say on the bottom, and I have some sort of extra information on the, say call it second homotopy group. When I, when I, when I take modules, I'm allowed somehow to, to shift some information of the second homotopy group to the first homotopy group and vice versa. Only if I do it with modules. If I, if I, if I see equivalence of categories, I don't see that. They have to be equivalent to P1, they have to be equivalent to Pi 2 But at taking modules, I could intelligently somehow shift this information, but it has to be a billion. That's, that's somehow, that's why I said the extensions are always, have to be always a billion. They, they cannot be non a billion because then this, this moving you cannot do. Um, so to, to finalize, well, Ernesto says that Luri has a version of it, but to my knowledge, there is some sort of no simple version, perhaps, of the of the Lie group case in which I start with a Lie group and an element and an element in H4 or BG, and I construct something out of it, a tensor category, whose whose center and whose if I take the center and the representations, I get this twisted key theory of uh, Hopkins, Telemann, and Fried. This I don't know if there is the object on which one can perform this. If, if one has it, one can do the same business. Take the category, take the modules, take the Morita equivalents, and perhaps one can get all of these things through, through the use. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Are there any questions? For A5, for a binary, uh, I consider a group is the same thing? The same thing, as long as you give me an extension. Which is a billion. As long as, the, as long as the extension, the, 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 what which things a billion, I, can t I take the class of the extension and I, and I push it on the other side up mm -hmm. and then I untwist it somehow. But, but somehow, it's not that I untwist it, it's that I put the twist somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 perhaps this could be seen as, as taking coordinates. I, I have group coordinates and cycle coordinates and I can swap them if I, if I think of them in a democratic way. Mm -hmm. But if I don't think them democratically, some coordinates are on the first level and some other coordinates on the second level. But if I swap them, the twist of the group, which is a two cycle, I shift them as a three cycle on the other one. Okay, so give me an extension that is a billion, and this follows. So this is related to splitting of uh, equivariant cohomology uh, theories? Of a splitting? was asking you yesterday. Yeah. So, um, Hiko is asking the following. If I, have, if I have an equivariant cohomology theory generically, and, um, and, and then I take the coefficients of a point, namely the current cohomology of a point, which is whatever it is, in the case of K theories, representations of the group, in the case of the equivalent cohomotopy theories, the poor side ring, uh, whether, first of all, the group acts trivially on the, on the coefficients. So he was asking me whether it, it, this could be applied or used to the splitting in the current commodity theories. The, 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 the answer is I don't know. I, I, I see them, I see many similarities. Th this could be applied, say, for this Tate cohomology, the equivariant Tate cohomology. Two groups with two twists that relate to this gives you the same Tate equivariant twisted cohomology. Because some of these are theories based on the Torah one, basically one circle shifts to the other circle uh, but the way to prove it I don't know how would, would it be that it's not by hand saying that this is the example but I don't know what's yet Thank you Sorry Well, a uh, natural question uh, is once you have solved the Morita equivalence problem uh, do you have a notion of tilting of of these categories. Oh, uh, could you remind me what is the tilting? Well, categories? for example, in, in the algebra case, uh, you have, if you have um, equivalent uh, module categories, the algebras are Morita equivalent, and you have uh, a projective module that, that solve the, the equivalence. And, well, tilting theory is like the same thing, but instead of using Home and tensor, you use X and Tor, for example. Yeah, so how does what they relate to Ernesto's uh, question whether this is the, the right center or not? And, 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 and I, I know th this is not the right at all. So you're asking me what is the, the right statement? 
and, and, and but it's all exact here. I, I don't have extensions. I don't have. Uh, uh, it's just somehow exact. So, so I could use tensor and on because it's exact. You see, I don't have to resolve anything. I don't know if I answer. This reminds me something else. That <coughs> Uh, you remember in our P duality paper, it's really a triple product and then you go to double products. Uh, it is a triple product that you go to multiplication of three things and then you go to two things or two, two other things. Yeah, so, so, um, so, so, so yeah, this, this is something that I haven't been able to do, but, but, but it's because. Um, because if this is a version of mirror symmetry or the soul duality, then maybe. A K A. So, if I understand correctly, then I'm somehow is trying to put this into some diagram, and then. So yes, this is somehow what I thought of the beginning. That this would be some sort of Fourier Mukai transform. But, but whatever I try to do, Fourier Mukai doesn't preserve tensor structure, and somehow. I, I, I met uh, Dimitri Kalein recently and asked him why, why on earth don't we care about the tensor structure of the category of sheaves on a variety? And he says, yeah, because then it's too rigid. Then, then if, you, if you want to preserve the tensor structure, it's basically not much what you can say. The, the, the classes are very small. But, if, but, but the thing we want to care is only the, the abelian structure, not the tensor structure. So the Fourier Mukai is very well suited for that, for getting about the tensor structure. So because this is tensor, then when I do pullback, it's OK. When I do push forwards, I destroy my tensor structure. So, yeah. so, so it's not possible to do it using this Fujimokai machinery. Although it's reminiscent. It's very reminiscent. Yeah, it because I have a class here, and I have a class in here, and I pull them back, and I relate them. But, but, but the, the way to go from one to the other is not full push, unfortunately. Of course, there is also a, a, a line bundle, clearly line bundle, which is A and A dual, and that gives you a specific map. So the whole information is the same, but the tensor structure doesn't allow you to do pull push. Maybe I'm not understanding well, or but it's, it's done using the the module, the specific module. Mm -hmm. 